Astonishing facts about Princess Helena, Queen Victoria's daughter. As all of Queen Victoria's children experienced, their lives were full of family drama, civil rivalry and personal woes. Princess Helena Augusta Victoria is the least remembered child of the bunch and most of what we know about her comes from her mother's diaries who did not always have the kindest of words to describe her fair daughter. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Helena's birth was plagued with panic when she was born blue on the 25th of May 1846, making her the least healthiest baby at birth. Thankfully, she recovered well from the birth under the care of the royal doctors, but her mother was still suffering from the difficult birth, bringing one of the most powerful women in the world to her knees. The hard-faced and strong queen had to pause her royal duties in order to recover from the birth. It must have been bad if she was willing to do this, and she had once chastised her own husband for wanting more than two days off for their honeymoon together. As she grew up, she had to fight for attention against a growing brood of eight siblings. This strengthened her character and she grew to stick up for herself against her brothers, constant teasing. On one occasion, she even socked them square in the nose. She was competitive and wanted to be the best at everything. She had many talents such as being an avid piano player. She rode horses. She had a talent for drawing as well. As well as this, her father was keen for her to learn to cook, clean and farm. She had many skills and she was the most talented of all of the Queen's children. She kept this role of the most talented child until her younger sister came along. This started up a fresh spark of competition with her sister as well as her brothers. When Princess Louise was born, she was the new shiny toy in the family, and Helena felt like she had to compete against her. Louise began to become just as talented as Helena, if not more so. Poor Helena was so overshadowed by Louise and her other sisters, and a family tragedy only made life worse for Helena. The death of her father impacted all of the siblings and devastated the life of her mother. The family were plunged into a deep state of grief with Helena writing to a friend. I adored Papa. I loved him more than anything on earth. He was my help and advisor. These hours were the happiest of my life. And now it is all, all over. Her mother made her life all the more unbearable when she insisted that her sisters move out of Windsor to join her at Osborne House to live in mourning and isolation from the public. You would think that the family would all be supporting each other during this difficult time, but Helena was left with little support for herself, making her feel lonely. Helena was one that deemed emotionally unstable and she would be quick to burst into tears at the slightest drama. It was due to this that Helena was not chosen to support her mother. Instead, she chose Louise as her assistant and her older sister Alice as her secretary. Left to her own devices led her to fall into some tragic traps, such as falling for the wrong man. She had little support and affection from her immediate family, and so she turned to others for this affection instead. Unfortunately, Helena found that affection in the form of Karl Ruland. This romance was doomed from the start, not only was Ruland the former private secretary to her dad, but he was roughly 13 years older than her. Queen Victoria found out about the pair's romance, which fueled some furious rows between the pair. From the moment onwards, she was not trusted with her own love life, and so her mother took control of this area of her life. Queen Victoria fired her lover and sent him packing back to Germany. Helena was left heartbroken by the separation and panic stations were set in place to marry Helena as quickly as possible to avoid this kind of scandal happening again. Her mother chose her husband for her. 
and Helena was deemed non-pretty compared to conventional beauty standards at the time. She was chunky, dowdy and double-chinned, meaning she was far away from the fairy tale princess look. Due to being a middle child of such a big brood, it made the marriage prospects less secure. Her mother threw in one more condition that made Mary and Helena a difficult pill to swallow because she was underestimated. Her oldest sister had been married off in 1862 and so Helena was forced into replace her role as unofficial secretary, something her mother had previously doubted her ability at. Much to her mother's surprise, she excelled at the role and she made an excellent companion to the Queen. Victoria then insisted that any suitor for her daughter would live in the Queen's residence with them. This was not a desirable situation and so many men refused to agree to the strict criteria. The one that did agree went on to tear the royal family apart and he was no royal suitor. You have to think about the type of man that would be willing to agree to this arrangement. The man chosen for Helena was Prince Christian of Schleswig Holstein. He was older than Helena as well as being pretty poor in comparison and his family's duchies were being fought over by Prussia and Denmark. Helena's elder sister, the crown princess, was all for the match but her sister Alice spoke out openly against it. Their proposed marriage caused many disagreements within the family and they weren't the only ones squabbling over it. Alexandra of Denmark, Helena's sister-in-law and daughter of the King of Denmark was especially outraged by the marriage. She believed that the lands in dispute belonged to her father and to Helena's sister-in-law. The Queen's decision to marry Helena off to Christian was nothing short of disgraceful. It is obvious that Helena's match to Christian was a massive political scandal but what did Helena herself have to say about all of this? Against all odds, against the age difference, despite him being from a poor family, despite the family uproar, the pair were extremely happy with the match for themselves. She was happy with the match and she found him pleasing, gentlemanlike, quiet and distinguished. It didn't take much persuasion from her mother to find the match a perfect one and so the marriage went ahead against all odds but the marriage would do little to improve her standing in the royal family. Helena's wedding was organised for the 5th of July 1866 and the whole spectacle was a disaster. There were members of the family that refused to attend, including Edward, her brother, and husband to Alexandra. They were in protest against the wedding and on top of this, one of the guests had a sudden gout attack. Further to the trauma of the day, one of the royal guests commented that Helena looked like she was marrying an aged uncle. It wasn't the best start to married life and the protests from family members only grew worse. Most people would have crumbled to the undoubted pressure that the newly married pair faced. Helena and her new husband defied all odds by having a relatively quiet marriage. He was a perfect man for her and they devoted themselves wholly to each other. Princess Helena mostly found happiness in her marriage, despite being the least eligible bride of the royal brood. The pair had promised to stay close to the queen in her residence, but Helena was struggling with the responsibilities. She was newly pregnant while juggling her role as her mother's personal secretary and best friend, as well as being a new wife. Her body was taking a toll with the pregnancy and she became unwell frequently as a result. Helena took after her mother and became pregnant quickly, giving birth in rapid succession. She gave birth to Christian Victor in 1867, followed by Albert in 1869, Helena Victoria in 1870 and Marie Louise in 1872. The pregnancies took their toll on her body and her health and she became unwell often, which her mother was not very empathetic of because her mother struggled to believe that she was even ill at all and often accused her of hypochondria. 
Helena was absolutely not a hypochondriac. She suffered from very real bouts of illness, including rheumatism, joint pain and severe congestion in her lungs. There were some lifestyle choices that would have not helped her ill health. She suffered from addiction. Her substance of choice was opium, which would have been prescribed by her own doctor, and her addiction spiralled out of control. She went on to grow her own life with her husband and children, but she suffered grief and loss of her own. On the 12th of May, 1876, Helena and her husband welcomed baby Harold, the fifth of their children, into their lives. Helena was overjoyed, but this did not last long because the poor baby only lived to eight days old. She went on to conceive again not long afterwards, but this was followed by further tragedy when she gave birth to a stillborn child on May the 7th, 1877, only five days shy of Harold's first birthday. The shock of losing two children back to back stunned Helena and plunged her into a grief so deep that no one is ever prepared to face. Her grief led her to become angry, angry at the world and the injustice she had faced, and so she gave up on life altogether. The Queen described her as being quite touchy and irritable due to her ill health. She was possibly suffering from PTSD from the trauma. Despite her ill health, she didn't want to do anything to cure it at all. She refused medical attention, which only worsened her condition further and led to her poor fate. Helena had become accustomed to grief. Her sister then tragically died from diphtheria. Helena was paralysed by grief at this stage. Helena's sister, although initially opposed her marriage to Christian, Alice was the one to convince Edward to show up to Helena's wedding. The pair had their differences as siblings often do, but they were there for each other when it counted. After everything she had experienced in life, it pushed her father away from her mother, perhaps due to the lack of emotional support given to her throughout her years of hardship. She was pushed closer to the husband she had built a life with, and consequently she began spending even less time with her mum. The Queen had matched the pair in a deliberate attempt to keep the couple close to her, so when they drifted away, she was truly annoyed and angered. She pushed for radical solutions and in 1887, Helena became the president of the British Nurses Association. She used her influence as the president to support the radical idea of creating a nurse registry in order to improve the education and status of those devoted and self-sacrificing women. She took her role seriously. She was not interested in just being the face of the project. She wanted to put her passion into action. When some members opposed her ideas, Helena wasn't afraid to shut them down. Helena was a natural leader. She was a smart cookie and was talented in many areas. One of her most natural skills was her ability to lead, just like her mother, the Queen. She ran the organisation she led with brutal efficiency. Anyone that questioned her was met with her power and confidence that her wish was sufficient, a reason to go ahead. In her private life, she did not exceed such confidence. She was battling with an opium addiction, still, and it was spiralling out of control. The family were becoming concerned. Her mother, who had never been concerned of her health before, was worried, as well as her husband, who begged the doctors to stop supplying her with it. Of which, Helena was furious about when she found out. She could not stop now. Her addiction had taken a grasp, her entire being, and it nearly broke her. Rather than the request that her husband had made to the doctors, Helena demanded the doctor supply her with more drugs, to which he responded by refusing to give her anything at all. Withdrawal from opiates will make you extremely ill, and Helena was no different. She even complained of losing her sight. Luckily, with a bit of family support from her elder sister, she was able to give up the habit. It was an amazing personal accomplishment, 
but a tragic family event cut Helena's celebration short. Helena was impeccably proud of her children, and her eldest son had become a major in the British Army, which saw him take trips away to battle. When he left to depart on another trip to South Africa, she never imagined that she would not see him again. But her son died during this trip when he caught malaria, and she received the news by telegram on the 25th of October 1900 that he was dangerously ill. Despite having the best medical care at his disposal, five days later, second devastating telegram with the news that he had died from the illness. Helena was used to grief. She had already lost many members of her family. But Queen Victoria did not take the news very well at all. She was quite elderly and her own health was deteriorating. Helena and her sister Beatrice comforted their mother on her deathbed while they watched her slowly wither away. Finally, on January the 22nd, 1901, Helena's mum breathed her last breath. Her death would mark the end of the Victorian era and with this came great change, especially the power dynamics of the family, which shifted, meaning more family drama and personal calamity. Helena's siblings disappeared from her life one by one, but the loss of Edward hit her especially hard. Edward VII had been almost abandoned by his own mother, and she blamed him for their father's death, but he was the heir to the throne and next in line for the crown. Edward VII, accompanied by his wife Alexandra of Denmark, kept Helena at arm's length. His wife was full with extreme jealousy of the royal family, which didn't bode well for a close sibling relationship between Helena and Edward. Not only this, Alexandra never really forgot the betrayal that was Helena marrying her husband, and she got revenge on Helena as queen consort. Helena's passion for nursing was evident in her actions. Alexandra decided she was now keenly interested in the cause, and so she demanded that her position as president was replaced. This led to things becoming increasingly toxic and nasty. The removal of her role as president was removed, which led to Helena feeling resentment against her brother and his wife. She had been outranked by her sister-in-law, and so she handed the reins over to Alexandra. Ever the dutiful princess, Helena continued supporting the monarchy, but she didn't serve the new king for long. Edward was an avid smoker, which ultimately led to his death. After a short rule of only nine years, the new monarch passed as he suffered multiple heart attacks and met his end. Only four years later, World War I broke out across Europe. This plunged Helena's family into personal strife when her own son fought for the Prussian army rather than the British army. Her son betrayed her, he battled and fought for the Germans who were wholeheartedly against Helena and her homeland. She lost contact with him due to the war and she would do nothing but wait for it all to come to an end. What she found out afterwards shocked her to her core. None of Helena's children had gone on to reproduce children of their own, or so she thought. She had gotten used to the idea that she would never be a grandmother. That all changed when Albert admitted to having a secret affair that resulted in a daughter named Valerie Marie. Though he never revealed the identity of the girl's mother, in the most gut-wrenching way possible, Helena now had a granddaughter. Despite giving up her title as president, Helena's passion for nursing never left her. She spent her spare time visiting hospitals during World War I, and her motivation was to improve the spirits of people staying there. She was loved by the ordinary public for her passion for the cause and her charity work. During World War I, Helena and her husband enjoyed their 50th wedding anniversary. This marriage that so many were against had stood the test of time and it was the longest out of all of her siblings. That didn't mean her husband was totally perfect though. He was the perfect husband and the perfect father, but he was pretty useless when it came to his influence on the royal family. 
He wasn't interested in helping the princess with her royal duties, but despite this, she loved him anyway. The couple were happy together and deeply in love, but the beginning of their relationship started off on an awkward footing when he believed he was meeting the queen to become her new husband instead of Helena's. The couple had been married a long time, but in 1917, her husband died at the age of 86. She was plunged into deep mourning again, a state she was probably becoming accustomed to. The commissioners, with little empathy for her situation, tried to evict her from her two residences, due to the expense of running her households. Six years later, in the spring of 1923, Helena fell victim to a disease which marked her end. Weeks later in May, the now elderly princess suffered a heart attack and was gone by the morning of June 9, 1923. Most of what we know comes from her mother's journals who often made mean remarks about her children growing overweight and being ugly. But despite what her mother journaled about her, she was far from weak and quiet person that the biographers had painted her as. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.